Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I think about the last time I did something for the community. They practice and shooting me. I guess I did something wrong. Something that can't be settled over a game of pong. But these niggas came bearer arms. I'm still writing songs. Never wanna leave my home. Stay in the sheets, sucking tits until it's sunny morning. Excuse me, grand rising, stack piling. She got her own money. We just high fiving sexual organs. Cause that's what gods and goddesses do. Let me know if that's an issue. I'm a firm believer in residual income. I don't know if women still use. Use Lancome, but my product's way fucking better. Shoot stack hey, cheddar. Hey, uh. I know you're waiting for another episode. Uh, another episode. I know you've been waiting for another episode. I know you've been waiting. Yeah, let it fucking go. I know you got the shit. Jabronis everywhere I see I'm feeling like it's rock bottom where I fucking go Nigga, I study Stone Cold 316 I keep a fish crushed can of brew from the fucking stove Every episode, my nigga, every episode, we gonna keep doing this. What's up, man? Oh, shit. Almost just busting my ass on camera. Hey, what's good, y'all? Let, let me make sure everything's straight. I'm Lord Shoewax, and you watch another episode of Lord Perfected Work. Welcome back. Damn, I ain't got no water. What's good, y'all? If you're watching this outside of uh, Twitch, you should probably make a Twitch account today and subscribe at Tier 3 so you can get all my latest projects for free. They're coming out soon, you know what I'm saying? Also, if, if you, you can subscribe at Tier 1 if you got Amazon Prime for free. Visit shoelovesrebels.com. So many things on my website that y'all can check out. I'm sure you would love it. Okay, so let's get to the meats and the potatoes. Today's stream is called When You Appreciate Yourself, You Appreciate Others. Now, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know it's hard, man. I know it's hard. But that's just how I gotta be, man. I know it's hard, but that's just how I gotta be, man. Life is exciting, though. I'll say that. <laughs> life is exciting. Every day, life is exciting. Because when you, um, when you have that moment where you like, damn, you know, if I just keep that certain feeling that makes me feel like I'm successful already, you gotta find shit that keeps that feeling going on a daily basis. As long as you keep doing that shit every day, before you know it, you're going to be like, damn, this looks different. That's why drug dealers sell drugs. Because it's instantaneous money, right? And that's why they're in the drug game so they can make money. But when they see seeing that much money all day, every day by selling large amounts of drugs, because you can't really make no real money if you're selling, if you're not selling pounds, if you're not selling kilos, there's no reason for you to be selling drugs. Matter of fact, there's no reason for you to be selling drugs. It's enough drug dealers in the world. Go live out your purpose. <laughs> People use drugs as an easy way to get to things that they like because it's just easy. You know what I'm saying? It's the easiest thing where you can keep your freedom and you control that you're the CEO of your drug operation instant, instantly. As soon as you get your first pack. But really, if you think about it, you're not the CEO until you become the plug. And to become a plug takes a long ass time because there's already so many plugs and most of them are the fucking police. So you gotta think about it. The game is not, it's not nice to people. But you gotta think the game is not nice to people when you're not in the drug game, but the game that we in. You know what I'm saying? All this shit is a means to an end. Now, whatever that end is, is actually up to you. That's the, that's the fun part about being in the game. 
But anyways, when you appreciate yourself, you appreciate others. I know we just kind of slid into a dark topic there for a second, but um, if you're ready to watch what I got going on, put hell yeah in the chat so I know who all here. Put I need a cool hell yeah in the chat, or you can say fuck yeah or whatever, whatever, whatever gets your boat floated. But we're going to switch over to the other screen here shortly. I just want to uh, acknowledge all the people who in here so I know what's going on. Y'all let me know what's good. Hold on, let me put hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. I'm ready. Shit. Hope y'all ready too. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to move into this other screen. Real quick. So y'all can watch this video with me to give y'all some context. Well, I'll talk a little bit. I'll wait till some more people come in here real quick <clears throat> so y'all can watch this shit with me. But yeah, man, today's been interesting for you, for your boy, or for the man, rather. Haven't been a boy in a long time. But shit been interesting for the man today. I've been fucking putting together some things. I can't wait can't wait y'all it's getting close to that time when i start start announcing shit that's when y'all gonna know but in the meantime we just gonna keep it funky and keep keep moving forward with the shit that we got going on but i'm just uh i'm just excited y'all can tell right i'm excited as fuck i probably don't look it though <laughs> i really am today was just one of them days where you know shit is uh shit can go any way Things can happen any way that they want to. But you know, I just stay busy and I, I stay on my on my purpose. And I keep God damn. I thought that yawn was gonna go away faster, but that shit was extended. I ain't been getting good sleep, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie. I've been sleeping like and granted I sleep like seven hours, but it'd be the most shallow sleep. Like it's not deep sleep. And I'm used to usually having deep sleep. Cause I used to smoke a lot of pot, y'all. So much pot, so much pot. Like I was a straight stoner. But y'all, I am no longer a stoner. Only way I will consume weed is if I eat it. So unfortunate. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the chat, 1111. It's all good, don't worry about it. You here. I was just talking about how uh, pretty soon uh, some cool things are about to happen. I'm just really excited right now, but I can't I can't really go too much into it because it's a surprise. <laughs> but yeah, man, rest assured, my good people. Rest assured, shit is coming, and y'all gonna be like, oh, that's what that's how y'all gonna be. Y'all gonna be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh my fuck Alright so We got a couple more people in here It's three people in this bitch now So Let's get into this video So I'm gonna switch over to the uh, Shoe live screen real quick Y'all know what it is Y'all gonna watch this video with me today So y'all can understand why I named today's stream When you appreciate yourself you appreciate others Alright so <laughs> we go watch this video so y'all can laugh as hard as I did at this. Y'all, uh, trigger warning. This is the most bullshit acting you're gonna ever see. <laughs> I just gotta let you know, man. I just gotta let you know. Alright, so let's go to shoe live screen real quick. We're gonna, gonna switch over real quick. <clears throat> Okay, let's get into this video. All right, y'all. Greg, Jamie, breakfast is ready. Hold up. All right, cool. I just had Pancakes. to make sure the audio was moving. Again. And where's the butter? This dude sounds like a hater. Hold on, let me put the head. All right, so. Mom, you know I can't eat these without syrup. Sweetheart, it's in the refrigerator. You can get it yourself. 
No. Can't you just get it for me? <laughs> just get it for him, Kathy. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? I'm running late. I was supposed to meet Mom 15 minutes ago. And bring me a napkin, will you? Really, Greg? Y'all see my face. You can't get it yourself. <laughs> Who treats people? Who treats their own wife like this, first of all? I don't know how you two are going to get by without me today. I'm the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You really think I can't do your job or take care of this house for a day? It's not as easy as it looks. This shit, this shit is definitely, uh... I texted you every Definitely time. crazy you considering homie's the CEO of a Fortune 500 I gotta go. company. I'll see you two later. <clears throat> I mean, how hard can it all be? Dad, I'm gonna be late for school. Shoot. I just want y'all to share with me okay. how incompetent- Wait, Hold where's up. my lunch? My okay, before we, before we go too deep into this, I just want y'all to share with me how incompetent this fucking dad is, bro. Like, listen. <laughs> this, this motherfucker here, boy. You a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, man. Should be ashamed. This is why I named the stream, when you care about yourself, you care about others, okay? When you care about yourself, you care about other people. Because, one, all men, I don't give a fuck, and, say, and vice versa. If, if your dude is the stay-at-home dad or whatever the fuck, and he's fucking taking care of the goddamn family or whatever... Like, what the fuck? Matter of fact, let me put it on big screen. So y'all can uh, see see this video. Now, if you are the... Uh, fuck, first off, you, you are the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. This means your company is in the top 500 traded companies in the fucking United States, bro. I want to say the world. But we'll just say the United States. That's what Fortune 500 means, okay? Now, how the fuck are you not able to goddamn do basic ass shit is what I'm trying to figure out. So we gonna continue watching this video. Mom usually packs it. Um, okay, I guess I'll make it for you. This shit is funny. The dad starts his first task. He makes Jamie a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and then takes him to Yo, school. Yo, y'all see how Buddy dropped it down? He came with a ziplock. He zip picks up groceries on his way home and unloads everything into the kitchen, stumbling along the way. Afterwards, he goes into the kitchen to start washing all of the dishes. He ends up breaking a plate in the process. Then he moves on to the bedroom and starts cleaning it. He begins with making the bed. It isn't as easy as he thought. Next, he grabs a mop and bucket and starts wiping down all of the floors. From there, he goes to the laundry room and moves all the clothes from the washer to the dryer. <laughs> he goes back to the kitchen to start taking out the trash. He doesn't like Maybe any Maybe you're supposed to be it. taking out the trash anyways. Finally, he brings Jamie home from school and then starts taking out everything he needs to cook dinner. By now, the dad's exhausted from all of the work and can't wait for his wife to get home. Here you go. Um, where's my fork? Oh. Right. You know I can't eat this without soy sauce. Come on. You know where it's at, you can get it yourself. Just get it for him, Greg. What's the big deal? <laughs> I like how they're giving this lady like punchlines and shit. I'm so glad you're here. My day has been so tough. <laughs> I thought my job was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Look, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that your job was so hard. Going forward, I promise. It's not, I'll nigga. Be a you lot suck. More appreciative of 
everything you do. <laughs> Thank you. You don't know how much that means to me. Aw. Go have a seat. I can take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> she looking like you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, now we thanking God because your bum ass didn't know how to do the laundry. Never mind. I'll get it myself. What it say? You never know how hard someone's job is until you do it yourself. All right, y'all. Y'all seen the video, man. I wouldn't even gotten the damn napkin. <laughs> <I used> the... <laughs> hey, bro. This motherfucker is stupid as hell, boy. Listen. Y'all just seen that same bullshit I just watched. Okay, number one. The fucking acting is goddamn terrible in that fucking video. So, But listen, man. For all my dudes out there, for all my ladies out there who might be the the breadwinner of your family, please do not let your significant other just get lost in the sauce of, of listening to what the fuck you got going on. Like, I myself have had to learn this, man, okay? That shit right there, hell nah. First off, nigga, you're crazy. How can you not do these basic ass tasks that every adult should know how to fucking do, man? How? You you gotta run a company, bro. But you can't do your own. I, listen, bro. As soon as I... Well, Alright, I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. As soon as I started smoking, bro, I asked my mom to teach me how to do the laundry. I had to be like 13 or 14, bro. Cause nigga, I'm not finna get caught smelling like weed. I'ma do my own goddamn laundry. That's just that's just how I think though. I'm just a smart motherfucker, I guess. But soon as I could even learn how to do laundry, I'm doing laundry. Putting up my sheets and shit like that. But I guess I grew up in a military family. My father was a he's a military veteran for 20 years, bro. 20 years of my life, I was in a military family. So. I mean, shit, I'm still in a military family to this day because we still say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and shit like that, you know, just being respectful. But come on, man. Y'all seen that shit. Buddy, buddy was washing dishes. He dropped the damn, he basically threw that hoe on the floor, man, because he was just so tired from, I don't even know. Y'all see how he was rushing to fucking make this nigga, it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, nigga. Like, that's that's what be blowing my mind, bro. Is how like dudes will literally get married and throw off all they shit on women just so they can cap like they just doing the most, but they can't even take care of their fucking self. And and women, cause you know some women might do that to men. I don't know. I'm a guy, so I just know it from my perspective. Yeah, dude, you homie was put. He will pick it. He first up, he picked up the ziplock bag and the shit fell out the bottom. Like nigga, you ain't zipped the shit up. And then he put it back in the bag. So homie eating fucking, probably got a little hair lint and shit on it. What the fuck is this? This nigga come home starving like fuck because all he ate was a peanut butter and jelly. Like, come on, bro. What the fuck was that? Like, bro. For the breadwinners, before you start going to be CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, learn how to fucking take care of yourself. I don't know how the fuck he became a, a fucking CEO of anything. Nigga, it started with you. How the fuck you know how to run a company but don't know how to fucking clean your drawers? Make your own food. Like, I'm pretty sure when Elon Musk first started PayPal, like, him and his brother was at least, they at least knew how to make fucking ramen. They knew how to heat up the ramen cup in the microwave. But no, them, they, they fucking smart. They probably had, like, money put up, put away so they can hire, you know, pay somebody to do that shit. But Why? Why when you could just learn yourself, bro? Okay, I get it. You might not have a fashion for cooking or a passion for cooking. See, I said fashion. You might not have no motherfucking fashion sense. I'm just thinking about how Elon Musk was dressing when he was running PayPal. This nigga was wearing them goddamn. He was wearing the motherfucking polo shirts. 
but instead of buttoning the shit up, it's just like open with no no undershirt, so you can see it's like hamburger meat and shit. Yeah, man. I don't know what the fuck is going on with with these CEOs, but apparently you get married to have basically a fucking slave. I'm like, bro, I had slaves and I wasn't married. Shit, that's really what it takes now. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> That shit is horrible, bro. I feel so bad for women sometimes, man. Only sometimes because I be feeling bad for men too. Men are overlooked uh, over a lot of shit and they're not fairly treated in a lot of situations as women are. So when people try to make like assumptions that, oh, women got this much more easier or men got this much more easy, like nah. It's an equal balance. We all out here going through the same shit. We all want equality from a system that got us not in equality. It's not about what we're doing and what we got more of. Remember, there's this many people and many motherfuckers. And let me take these headphones off. I don't need these hoes. This many motherfuckers telling you what to do. This many motherfuckers that's not telling people what to do. So, if, if I was y'all, I wouldn't even be worried about that shit, man. Like, I just wouldn't even, I wouldn't even trip on it. The main thing is to worry about yourself. Once you're worrying about yourself, then you can take care of somebody else. Then you, then you will care about other people. And shit like that video won't happen. Because the only reason that video's happened is because motherfucker, as soon as he got married, and Shorty said, I do. And, and that nigga took... Uh, through sickness, through health, all that bullshit, he took them vows to the motherfucking heart, but he was like, bitch, you my slave now. You belong to me now. Whatever you trying to do, hey, that shit is dead. <laughs> Whatever dreams you had, you might as well just go ahead and just stop dreaming, okay? Because that is over with now. Now that we're married, your dreams are gone. You might as well just throw them shits in the toilet. But it's just amazing to me how people can really be fucked up like that to somebody else. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I explode sometimes. You know, people get angry. But that's what emotional intelligence takes when you're dealing, when you're upset. Basically, you gotta find a way where y'all can come to a common ground. And, you know, I ain't saying that I'm perfect and I'm just up here just, oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Like, nah, bro. Every day, I work towards being a better person for myself and my partner, not just fucking her, okay? Because if that's the case, how the fuck am I going to be able to handle shit if she decides that, okay, well, I want to care 100% about myself and I feel like you might be holding me back. I'm supposed to be a dickhead and be like, nah, bitch, you my slave. You can't go nowhere. Nigga, you know how fucking crazy you sound? Like, nah, bro. Everybody deserves a chance to truly find themselves and to grow. And shit like that in that video, that's what happens when you stomp on somebody's dreams, but you let somebody also stomp on your dreams. You're seeing it from both perspectives. The fact that she had to go through it just to prove a point, why? Why prove a point, man? If that motherfucker can't see himself, it took proving a point. And you see, as soon as she came home, buddy, like, I'm so glad you're here for all the wrong shit. Buddy was like, um, he instantly switched up. He was like, hey, can you grab this for me? And then she just look at him like, really, nigga? And he's like, oh, yeah, uh, I'll just go get it myself. I give it two days, man. That whole that the whole point she went through prove, trying to prove, that shit finna be out that nigga's head. Because remember, he runs a Fortune 500 company. He's not thinking about your ass still. You might as well throw that shit, take, chalk that up to a whole motherfucking L. But that's, that's just how fucked up the world is right now because of a few things. I'm not going to go super deep into it, but y'all know capitalism is number one. Capitalism is the reason why families are broken up. Straight up. There's there's no way that they can make, make it where people... I mean, in our new age, now, capitalism actually has been working in a better direction because there's more of a digital... It's more of like a digital platform that people can actually work from, you know, from their computers and shit. So it makes it easier to be around your family, even though you might be working. Your presence is needed, man. And you can you can be like, hey, hold on real quick. Let me stop what I'm doing. Hey, let me go deal with my family real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, it gives you the freedom to stop doing that shit and go deal with your family directly. As opposed to, oh, man, uh, uh, Johnny... 
I'm, I'm with my family right now. Can this wait? Nah, man, you got to be up here right now. Hey, babe, sorry about what happened. Hey, son, sorry about what happened. I got to go. Like, come on, man. Those days are over. This is not the fucking 1950s no more. But you see how Buddy was acting. He was acting like it was 1938 or some shit. Why don't you go get the napkin, will ya? Like, damn, bro, you just gonna tell... Then now you got your son, he gonna act like a little bitch too when he grow up. It's just two bitches. Just a bunch of bitches all around. Just a whole family of bitches. Like, y'all gotta stop that shit. It should be a whole household of strong individuals who are able to take care of themselves that can come together and be like... I think I will choose to create dinner. Like, those, those are the type of arguments y'all should be having. No, no. No. I'll make dinner today. No, no, no. Please, I insist. I'll make the dinner today. No, 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 no. You made dinner yesterday. I think I'll make... Like, bro, what the fuck? But that type of shit don't exist because niggas... First, niggas be in their egos too much. As soon as a nigga come in, in a female and he have a baby with her, this nigga's like, oh, you definitely my bitch now. And then the baby grows up and the baby's like, ha ha, dad made you his bitch. You're my bitch too. Like, it, it's just a never ending cycle. And then the female not gonna do shit because I don't even know. I don't know why females don't do shit in situations like that. I think it probably is most likely out of fear. Fear of losing her life physically. <laughs> fear of losing her resources. Because it's hard for women who already are in the mix of being like, a stay-at-home mom and a wife to go out into working world, they end up with bullshit-ass jobs anyways, unless they went to college, which, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you went to college, like, what the fuck? What was the point of going to college? Like, you have this great degree and you could just easily be going making money, but instead you just wanted to say fuck it. Like, you could at least work from home if you're gonna be a college mom. But, you know, this is just my opinion. But I'm just like, bro, what's the point, bro? You really could just... All those years you were in college, I don't know if you were just trying to just I don't know, girls have they like, fuck, fucking years in college, I guess, according to TV and movies and shit. They have all their fun in their college years, but I'm just like, bruh, all you gotta do is go, hey, come, come to, uh, come to one of Robbins for a day and just hit the block, man. A uh, hundred niggas will fuck you. Matter of fact, go to Sherry Lane. A uh, hundred niggas will pass you around and you can have all the fun you want. And I'm pretty sure these niggas clean. You know what I'm saying? They, they smashing out like crazy. Actually, I think all them niggas got girls now. But, I mean, what does that mean? Because if y'all not married, basically everybody's single. According, according to what the world's saying. See, I don't know, man. People stop taking relationships, all relationships serious. They stop taking friendships serious. They stop taking, girl, like, just all relationships. They just stop taking them serious, man. And it's fucked up because, I mean, how, how, how do you get intimate with somebody that you're just going to say fuck it in, like, a month, two months? A day, two days, like, what the fuck? I, I, it just, it just goes over my head, bro. And it's just like, oh, we're just having fun. That's fun. That's how y'all have fun. This is how y'all have fun by doing stupid tacky shit like that. If, if, if you got something to say in the chat about it, please inform me. Maybe I'm missing out on something. But that shit sound tacky as fuck to me. You know how I have fun? I go play laser tag. I go to an amusement park. That's fun. I go play a sport. That's actually fun. You know what? I, I do spiritual stuff. Like, do tarot. That's fun. But just meeting some random person, getting really close to them for 30 minutes, an hour, sometimes two minutes, 15 minutes. And then, well, that was fun. See you around, maybe. What the fuck? <laughs> like, am I missing something? Nah. Maybe I'm just built different. But that shit sound tacky as fuck. But you know, y'all do y'all, man. I'm not hating. Because everybody got a choice. They wake up, do whatever the fuck they want. Ain't my, ain't my goddamn life, so. But I'm just like, bruh. How? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out, man. I can't just rant. Like I said, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure that if I made a chick that I really fucked with at some random place, I feel like 
even now, bro, because even back then in the day when I used to just be like hella just fucking like that, I'm pretty sure I still used to like still be respectable unless I was just fucking trash drunk. And at that point, my manipulation skills were amazing that I didn't have to, I didn't have to do nothing. I just wake up with some new some new viscous guts, as my boy calls them, the viscous innards. <laughs> like, but when I see a chick and I'm like sober enough to know, like, okay, I shouldn't take advantage of her because she's drunk. Like, niggas literally be like, yeah, bro, I fucked the shit out of her. Like, nigga, she was not in her right mind to begin with. Anything you say to a chick, you showing her some attention because let's just be real, women like attention, and they're fucking drunk, so they just like it even more. Like, bro. You giving her attention, she wasted. You saying the shit she want to hear. Eventually, she's going to fucking... The shit just turns on. Some kind of too permissive. Many don't see sex from a spiritual perspective. Man, look. All right, I'm going to read what she said out loud. Some people are sexually traumatized, and it ends up being the thing they try to control subconsciously through promiscuity. And many don't see sex from a spiritual perspective. It don't even got to be spiritual, bro. You can see it from the bacterial perspective, <laughs> the fiber perspective, the fungal perspective. Like, come on, bro. You know how clean you are. So just imagine how dirty a random motherfucker you done met somewhere else is, man. Y'all been dancing all night and shit. She drunk as hell, sweating like a motherfucker. And you want to take that home, nigga? I like my bitches. I don't even like fucking bitches unless they take a shower before we fucking... That's why I'm like, y'all motherfuckers just don't care. Y'all just don't got no motherfucking morals. That's what that is. Look, some people are sexually traumatized. Okay, so by being traumatized, PTSD equals crabs. PTSD equals AIDS. Like, come on, bro. Sex is not bad when you're doing it with somebody that you kind of know and y'all staying consistent. And y'all like, oh yeah, okay, I'm only giving my dick to you. I'm only giving my vagina to you. That makes sense. Because at least you know this motherfucker. At least you know how clean this motherfucker is. And if you don't trust them being super clean, you can tell they motherfucking ass when they come over. And, man, hey. Man, before I used to go smash, bro, I used to take a shower. Even though I took a shower that morning, I still take, I take another shower and then go pull up on shorty. I'm like, you brush your teeth? You take a shower, let me smell your breath. <laughs> let me smell your pussy. Like, I'm that type of nigga, bro. Trust me, I know what other niggas' dick, dicks and balls smell like. So I'm off rip smelling the pussy. Oh, I already took a shower. Take another shower. For real, look, I'm finna go home, man. You, you told me to come over here and, and beat them guts down, nigga. The fuck? Y'all got me fucked up. I can't think but one time off the top of my head where I was just like, it was just spurred a moment. One time, bro, and I, I ain't regret it. That shit was fine. <laughs> I ain't regret it. That shit was fine. But nah, bro. See, I, it was 420. A nigga was beyond trashed. But that's what I'm saying. Even then, bro, like we, we using condoms and I'm fucked up. So already I know I ain't that fucked up. That's what I'm saying, bro. Niggas will have an excuse in the book for everything, bro. Call it trauma. You can call it a, a void missing in your soul, bro. Like, listen, y'all. There, there, you got to care about yourself. When you appreciate yourself, you appreciate others, man. Appreciate yourself. I get it. It's hard. Especially, like... I was talking to my homegirl today, man. And she was like, um, she's talking to me about how, I'm trying to think how we got to the conversation. She, we were talking about this song and the song was about uh, how she was like, oh, this is the one thing I got from my mom. One good thing I got from my mom. Cause she's like, I don't have no ass and I got that from my mom. And I was like, yeah, but that doesn't define you, my nigga. Like, you worrying about the wrong shit. Why does it matter? Oh, it's an ass world. This, this is what women telling me. This is, it's an ass world, shoe. Uh, and I don't have an ass and you know, it's the thing now to have ass. And I'm like, why? How? 
as far as I'm concerned, it's always been an ass world. It's always been a titty world. It's just what you decide to subject yourself to is what's making it an ass world in the titty world. Like, what the fuck? Like, why do you care about that? Like, that shit don't define you. It's hard when they putting it in your face all day. Okay, well then stop watching TV. Stop watching the shit that's making you feel insecure about yourself. Like, y'all have all these tools, bro, around you all the time. But instead, y'all choose to be sucked into that bullshit. And then I have to be the one that be offering advice like that. Like, nigga, you can find yourself all the time by caring about yourself and being happy with how you are, bro. Be happy with who you are, man. It is no, um, it is no person that can have that much power for you, f- for you to feel some type of way, bro. This goes for men and women, not just women. But I just using examples from my real life. Like, bro, I don't give a fuck. For the longest time, bro, I, it used to be a reoccurring joke with me and 1111. I used to say I have a micro dick. And I'm saying this because I want y'all to understand what I'm what I'm trying to tell y'all right now it is a it was an ongoing joke cuz uh I'm not going to lie I never had no girls tell me like oh man your dick is just so tiny like micro size like I never had that problem and I'm not on here just like boasting about my dick I'm trying to help y'all understand that this shit don't matter I never gave a fuck okay I was getting pussy consistently bro for years None of that shit matters. If if getting pussy is what matters to you, that shit don't matter. Girls don't care because girls come from an emotional place. Look, I dated this girl one time, right? So when I we used to work together at uh, Olive Garden, when I used to work there a long time ago, this was like right after I got out of high school, maybe a couple years, and she um she had just broke up with her boyfriend, right? Because I guess her boyfriend was cheating on her. And uh, we ended up dating and shit. Well, first we was just like cool. And I used to come over. And I used to just like chill with her and just look out. You know, because I don't know, bro. I'm just too. I always say this all the time. I'm just too good for this world sometimes, bro. But I could just tell she was going through it. Because that was my nigga at work. Like she would just always be like, you know. In a good mood and shit. And then one day she just stopped. And then like over time like shit just got bad. And then someone introduced her to me formally and was like, Y'all should y'all should hang out. Cause I guess after her boyfriend broke up, like people was trying to get her to date other people. And I'm just like, I don't really I ain't seen I ain't see her like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm just I don't see I, I just don't be going around just looking to like fuck and just Oh, I need... Man, she got a nice body. I'm gonna just... I'm gonna fuck her. Like, nah, bro. I just was never on no shit like that. And we didn't never flirt with each other or nothing like that at work either. So it was just like... Completely like... Okay, you my co-worker. And I care about you because your performance is gonna fuck up this kitchen. And then we all gonna have to deal with it. So I just always look out for my, my co-workers. So... In the beginning, that's how it was. And I used to just come over and just, you know, come see her and shit. And like, hey, I'm going I'm to just, you know, look out for you. We can play some games. Like, you know, just taking her mind off shit. You know, we can get, I'll go get a bottle and we can drink and we can talk and shit. And then after a while, like doing that shit, we started like liking each other. Because, you know, we was just getting personal and talking about our lives and shit. Like you see the process I'm going through, right? Like it wasn't just, oh, damn, she got a nice body. I'm going to fuck the doggy shit out of her. Like, nah, bro. Like, we went through a process of I got to know her on an intimate level. And then I felt comfortable enough to fuck with her on an intimate level where it was physical. So I, I, I being who I am, was like, all right, you know, I think we should, like, do that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And then it was cool. You know, we was, like, on that shit for a while. Like, basically, I ended up, like, driving her car and shit. And, you know, I was like, basically, I lived... At this nigga's crib, like, I I had, like, left my shit, and I used to just go over there all the time. And sometimes I'd be there for, like, a couple days. I ain't want to stay over there a lot, because I like having my own shit. So every now and then, I'd go over there every couple days. Then, after a while, that feeling started going away from her. Then she started back talking to her nigga again, the, the ex. 
And then slowly but surely, that nigga start coming over to the crib and she stopped fucking with me. See, people be using niggas as distractions sometimes too, bro. Like, sometimes shit just is what it is. You know, you help somebody, you help them heal. But then some will come back in and just destroy all that healing. And sometimes that's just how shit gotta go. And I could have went about it like more fucked up. And I kind of did at first. I was tripping. I'm not even gonna lie. I was tripping because I'm like, damn, bro. Like we done got close and shit. And I was going over there all the time looking out, you know, buying you food, breakfast and shit, making sure you was good. Like I cared about you when this nigga didn't give a fuck about you. See, it wasn't even about, oh, damn. But see, that's the thing, bro. Never extend yourself like more than you have to. You know, and don't a situation like that. I fucked up because what I should have done was I should have just stayed in my position. I should have played my position where I was at. I could have either just stayed a fuck buddy, which that ain't my that's not my type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? And we actually was dating. So that was like my girlfriend for a moment. But what I should have did was stayed in my position. And instead, I let I let shit get out of proportion because when niggas talk and they in their feelings and I ain't talking about me, I was talking about her. She she was talking to me from the perspective of, oh, I think this is something that's going to last like a long time. So I'm just like, man, you know, I already have my thing going on. So I'm just like going harder. You know what I'm saying? Going harder on my thing to make sure that, OK, well, I got to make sure my shit good. I can't be fucking around. You know what I'm saying? Because if she decided to go do her thing and make sure shit popping on both ends, that that would work even better to my advantage. So why not be ahead of the game? Right. But fucked up because I'm just <laughs> butt fuck. But I fucked up anyways. Just on a simple fact that I should have just stayed in my lane and not let shit go where it went. But you know, when you get intimate with people, t- that type of shit happens. But see, I'm I'm a lot wiser than that now. Like honestly, man, I had my moments recently where I was just like, bro, don't fucking play with me. But I'm just like thinking, even then, listening to myself, like, bro, you tripping. Because at the end of the day, man, this motherfucker going to do what they fucking want. People going to do what they want, bro. People going to say and have their opinion. That's why you have to be strong within yourself. You have to appreciate yourself in order to be able to just let shit like that slide off your back. You can't, you cannot, look, you can put your whole heart into shit, which is why I think women are fucking psychotic because they're willing to put their whole heart into some and still not be afraid of the outcome. And then when they get fucking ruined, some of them turn out some, and that's a very small percentage of them turn out all right. But most of them just do what 1111 said, become sexually traumatized and end up being promiscuous as fuck, which makes no sense because you claim how not how, Oh, you just got to take a chance on love. And then you go through that shit. Like, Okay, I get it. Uh, sexual freedom, that's cool. I get it. But I'm pretty sure 90% of chicks, if otherwise, pro- the problems of the world wouldn't be as they are if the, if 90% of chicks actually followed, in, followed up on themselves first before they just go on these fuck sprees. That's why men are committing suicide way more. I'm not going to say black men, but... White men are committing suicide at a way higher rate than every person. And that's just that's just the statistics. But men are committing suicide. And nine times out of ten, it's probably either because of a relationship or family issues. So. And y'all can look this up yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Do your research. Don't just follow my word for it. But just know. If I'm saying something, it's coming from a place where I did a lot of motherfucking research. But shit like that is happening, right? It shouldn't be, but it is. Granted, women might be killing themselves, but I think women are getting, if anything, the more that women are getting out of this and kids is kidnapped, sexually assaulted. So it's just it's just all bad. But that's because people not giving a fuck about themselves. And the kids are becoming a product of that because when they see mommy and daddy doing stupid shit or end up getting fucked up because mommy and daddy wasn't protecting them and they end up getting fucked up. It's just a fucked up cycle, man. So I just wanted to show y'all that video today for real because 
it's just crazy how shit like this is still happening in 2021 and the generations that's coming up under us is continuing that cycle of bullshit and it's just crazy because you see the kid like he acting exactly like the dad mom i can't do this like nigga if you don't get your overgrown ass up like bro you tripping tripping but see that's the thing man people people not fucking seeing that point See, it's a, it's a difference when you're all together. When you went, I'm, I'm with my family right now. When y'all are all together, right, and y'all going towards a common goal, and everybody mostly on the same page, if not everybody on the same page, what what can come out of the shit? Because everybody on the same page and have an understanding of each other, but is mature as fuck. It's not going to be too many problems. When you're doing that type of shit, that makes sense. But when you're just using somebody, bro, which I've seen both angles, to be honest with you. I've seen both angles. Niggas should know how to take care of their motherfucking self, first and foremost. Any husband, any wife should know how to take care of their motherfucking self. I'm sorry. You you fucking are failing yourself if you don't. I don't give a fuck if all you know how to cook is one dish, man. At least know how to cook that motherfucker So when you starving like fuck And ain't nobody around bro You can eat that every fucking day It's not gonna be hard to grocery shop <laughs> Like You eating the same shit every day But see You see how, how stupid that sounds When all these options out here And you can make yourself a better person By understanding what you doing In all form Be, be James Bond Y'all niggas watch the motherfucking movie People that, that watch movies like that or, or movies where there's a, a a strong female lead, which it seems like every strong female lead of a movie that I've seen that wasn't like a fashion movie, which is, that shit is fucking stereotypical as fuck. They always go around killing up a bunch of men. Like, you can't have a strong female role of a woman just caring about herself. I don't see very many movies like that. It's always some movie where she fucking... Shooting somebody goddamn body up. She beating a bunch of niggas up. She's like, come on, bro. We got to stop with these fucking stereotypes, man. That's why niggas ain't appreciating themselves. Because they following their stereotypical role of what a man supposed to be. According to older generations. Or what a woman supposed to be. According to older generations. Uh, you should figure out for yourself. What do you think a woman is to you? If looking back at what you've seen other people do in your family and it made sense and you like, okay, all the women in my family do this and it makes people genuinely happy. It makes people grow. It makes people better. Though that, that should be what you build that off of. Not what, no, a woman's supposed to do whatever the fuck a man tells her and blah, blah, blah. She's supposed to suck his dick every morning when he wake up before he go to work and have breakfast waiting on the table right after she finished sucking the dick. Like, come on, bro. That don't sound like a bad idea, but come on, bro. Let's just be real, man. Like, damn. Shit be blowing me, bro. That shit be blowing me. Because I care about all of y'all. I care about every single person who watched this stream, man. For real. I really do from the bottom of my motherfucking soul. Because it's just wrong, man. Like, god damn. People get ill from that type of shit. That shit has happened to me personally. That shit is wrong. Please. Send this video to people who you know doing some lame shit. Don't tell them what it is. Just be like, hey, I want you to watch this video. This guy is funny. Because <laughs> when I'm on top of their motherfucking head, they're going to be like... Looking weak as hell, man. Come on, man. What the fuck is that, y'all? We got to do better. We as a group watching this, this stream, everybody... We got to do better, too, because we got to start holding people accountable for weak-ass shit like that. I done had to step in my damn self a few times. Like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Y'all want to get y'all ass beat by Lord Shoe X, too, huh? Y'all just asking for a motherfucking ass whooping today. <laughs> like, get real, man. But, hey, what do I know? Shit. I don't have a family of my own, really. I mean, I have a family, but they so far away from me, man. They're so far away from me. Now I feel like listening to that song, man. <laughs> hey, if y'all never heard a... Uh, 
Hold up. Let me see. Let me see if that song. Oh my God, yes. Okay, so y'all should listen to this song by Little Brother. Oh my God, what is happening to me, man? My whole life is just going so fast. Little Brother is a hip hop group that came out in the early 2000s, and their producer was Ninth Wonder. This this group got Ninth Wonder famous as a producer. Ninth Wonder is a producer. Recently, the the most recent works I know of him that is big is the song he did with Kendrick Lamar on the Damn album. That was probably about three years ago. But Little Brother is a that's a big hip hop group in the underground community. Y'all should check them out. They got a song called Away From Me. Oh my God, that is a fire ass song, bro. And the, listen to the beat first and then run it back and listen to the lyrics. Knife Wonder made this beat, y'all. Listen to the chops. Listen to the emotion, man. Like, y'all, you motherfucking tripping if you don't think that song. If that song don't hit a spot, like, you tripping, bro. I used to just ride to this shit, man. I ain't even got no kids. I don't got, I ain't even have no girlfriend. Just be riding to that like, damn, bro, I miss my girl. Like, nigga, you don't even got a girl. <laughs> I miss my imaginary girlfriend and child. My baby mama and my son. I, don't, I miss them. I'm just riding around feeling for these niggas, man. See, songs like this shouldn't, shouldn't exist, but they do. And it's it's all right because it let it puts you into perspective of why you should appreciate yourself. So you can appreciate other people, man. Y'all just watch another episode of Lord Perfect the Work. I'm Lord Shoe X. I'm a polymath based out of Georgia. If you watch this whole stream outside of Twitch, please make a Twitch account and subscribe to my damn channel. If you subscribe at tier three, I will give you everything I'm about to release in the in the upcoming months for free. Subscribe at tier three and you will get all Lord X projects for free. That's the rhyme. That's the riddle, okay? Also, if you subscribe at tier one with Amazon Prime, you'll get a month for free with Amazon Prime. So you don't even... Look, just support the channel, y'all. Support the channel. Y'all gonna make it better the more y'all do that shit. Also, visit the website. You see it on the screen. Shoelovesrebels.com. Stop playing. You know the website gonna be tight because I'm tight. So go check out the website. Appreciate everybody for being so in tune with the chat today. Appreciate you, 11.11. You know I had to throw the little brother song. I got to throw at least one hip-hop song in every single one of these streams, it seemed like. If I ain't talk about hip-hop at least once, y'all know it's not Lord Shoe X. And they done killed me in jail. I died in jail. And it's the government fault. But anyways, much love to you, yours in the world. Please visit the website. I'm going to change this slideshow with these spiritual images soon. I just want to make sure that y'all absorbing them. So when I move into the next ones, y'all understand these are images that I've created. Um, Stay on the lookout. Keep watching the channel. I'm going to do another shoe live soon, y'all. Okay. It's been a minute since I did shoe live, but only reason I haven't been doing those shoe lives because I've been focusing on the album and I don't want to distract myself right now. Not to mention all these shoe live beats. I got to I got to go back in and uh mix them over and shit like that. So if I decide to do records with him, it's going to be with my dog uh Michael. I don't know his artist name, but he probably not even going to have an artist name. I'll keep y'all in tune with what's going on with that if if a project ever comes from that. And if it doesn't, more than likely me and Phelps probably going to do something. And we actually working on a project now too, so I know. I went back on what I said 11:11. I'm sorry. It just is what it is, man. Every time I do a project with this nigga, it keep me relevant some more. And I don't know why. But much love to you, yours in the world. I'm out this bitch. I'm out this bitch. Jabronis everywhere I see I'm feeling like it's rock bottom where I fucking go Nigga, I study Stone Cold 316 I keep a fish crushed can of brew from the fucking stove